the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword and the Bible says out of the mouth of Jesus went forth a double-edged sword hallelujah so when you are facing a challenge you do not resist by standing still you resist by going on the offense you begin to pull up the scriptures hallelujah and declare the Lord is my light and my salvation who shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when you do that, you activate God in the realm of the spirit. You release the two-edged sword. Hallelujah.
I want to tell you this today because I am teaching this message from the context of spiritual growth. Every time you take communion, remember your responsibility to feed on Christ from the word. Every time, every time, every time you take communion, remember your responsibility to nourish your spirit man. Hallelujah. It must be a reminder of the goodness of God. Let it also be a reminder of the provision of God for your spirit. Do you remember what Jesus said? Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Believers that feed on the word are strong believers. They're not beaten by life. They're like Mount Zion, which abides forever. Storms may come by Shia Lentu. Hallelujah. Because it is founded on the rock. Um, James 4, verse 5. It talks about something very important. It says, submit to God. The Amplified says, subject yourself to God. And then it says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's one of the most powerful scriptures. I nearly changed my message to preach this because... As when I went to sleep after my, my prayer at 2 a.m. this morning, God brought this scripture to my spirit. And he said, look at it in the Greek. I always looked at the, I always looked at the, the word, he will flee. Because when he talks about fleeing there, it's a word, a Greek word, figo. It's like to, to, to run for cover. It's like the devil running to escape, to hide. You understand? When he says he will flee, is to escape for cover, to flee for cover. It's not like, you know, when we read this verse, resist the devil, he will flee. You, I know a lot of you are reading it as resist the devil and he will leave you alone. Resist the devil and he will leave you alone. No! It says he will flee for cover. He will run to hide. Then it tells you it's not an ordinary resisting. It's not like Mm. or they are hitting you, you know when you resist you pretend like you're not feeling pain but you're actually feeling pain yeah no 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 it's not that kind the greek word there it's a military term it's an ancient greek military term it means taking the devil on the offense it means going on the offense against your enemy so when others are retreating but they are calling that resisting on the offense it means when you stand, you are standing, but you are aiming at the target. Hallelujah. You are standing, but you are sending missiles. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. And the Bible says out of the mouth of Jesus went forth a double-edged sword. Hallelujah. So when you are facing a challenge, you do not resist by standing still. You resist by going on the offense. You begin to pull up the scriptures, hallelujah, and declare the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When you do that, you activate God in the realm of the spirit. You release the two-edged sword. Hallelujah. You see why I wanted to change, to preach this message? But that's not the message. Hallelujah. I told you it was something on the side. Hallelujah. Back to the Holy Communion. So, remember your responsibility towards the word every time when you take communion. Don't just eat it. Don't just eat it. Remember your responsibility and you will see why. Verse 31. It starts by saying then. You see that it says then. Then what? Their eyes were suddenly open. Their eyes were suddenly open. At what stage were their eyes suddenly open? After the breaking of bread. After they received the bread. After they partook of the bread. Something happened. There is a miracle that happened at communion. Trust me. There is a miracle that happened at communion. For a long time, we have limited it to health. And it includes that. A vital part of it. But more than that, it's about the revelation of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I think it's verse 26 or verse 27, somewhere there, he talks about when you partake of, of, 
when you partake of the Holy Communion, it says, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. It says, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So, there is a mystery there. You are proclaiming the death of someone who lives. You are proclaiming the death of someone who lives. So, it says, actually, when it says, until he comes, it means until he returns again the same way he went. Because the Lord will descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So it says when you partake of the Holy Communion, it says for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are representing and signifying and proclaiming the fact of the Lord's death until he comes again. You see that it says until he comes again. So, Let's connect it to what happened here. Let's connect it to what happened here. Because remember, you take communion to proclaim the death of someone who lives. But you are proclaiming the death. What happens in between? Because 1 Corinthians 15 tells us that if Christ did not rise from the dead, it says our salvation is futile. You know what makes your salvation? His death and his resurrection. If he died and he did not rise, salvation is futile. We will be preaching a gospel that is meaningless, that it has no power. Hallelujah. But we are saving a king that has reason. His reason. So there is, there is a passage. There are responsibility in the partaking until he come. Because remember, if you, your mindset is focused on his death, you are a weak believer. You are a weak believer. Because you are proclaiming the death of someone who lives without revelation. He is alive. That is why here when, they, when he gave them the bread and they fed on it, their eyes were open. And they saw him. Hallelujah. They did not open themselves, their eyes. They were open. Look at the process, Basara. Look at the process. He was going to pass them. He was going to pass them. Like it passes through so many people. Even in church, even on a Sunday morning. It passes through many. But these ones refused to let him pass. They refused to let him pass. They asked him to stay. Hallelujah. And when he stayed, he does not stay in a place. And he does not bring something tangible. No ways. No ways. No ways. No ways. No ways. No one of the signs that God has given to us as a church, and I always tell this to you all the time, and pay attention to this. I received the revelation of the Holy Communion before I was even told once that I had a calling to pastor. I received the revelation of the Holy Communion. The Lord himself, the Lord himself taught me about the Holy Communion. Because I've had experiences with God. You see, I'm not teaching you to know a Christ that I've just read in the Bible. Three times I had an experience with God. Three times. The first time, after I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, the Lord put in my heart to wake up every day, five o'clock to pray. Five o'clock to pray. Five a.m. I would stay there and pray. Sometimes I would lose track of time. When I started, it was just for one hour, and I, I would keep my watch 30 minutes. Yo, yeah, I grew in that to a point where I lost track of time. The first time I did a real fast, a real fast, it was in those moments. So one of the mornings, I'm sleeping, and it's five o'clock. I don't know what happened to my alarm, whether I set the alarm or I didn't set the alarm. And then I heard a bang. And I woke up and the Lord turned my heart and I looked at the window. In a flesh, I saw the face of Jesus on the window. Like in a millisecond. Not a, not a, you see, not a blink is too much. It was, you will think it's an imagination, but it was not an imagination. It was so deep. It was so deep. And I saw him on the window. And then, the second time, 
I woke up five o'clock, going to my prayer room, and I was fellowshipping with the Lord. I remember that time it was six straight days. I went there normally that I'm gonna go out, prepare myself, and go to work. In fact, my clothes were even in in my prayer room. That's where I would wake up every morning, change from there, even going to church, change from there. So I don't remember which day it was because I lost track of time completely. I only understood it was six days when I got out there. And one of the days, the Lord comes to me. It was not like physical, like, you, like I see you now. It was in an open, clear vision. Clear, clear vision like, you know, when you have, a, when you have some of us who travel in the spirit, we have fellowships with people who are from elsewhere. There is someone, I'll share the story if we continue with, with this, who I have, I've never met this pastor, but I fellowshiped with him. When I woke up, I could still smell his perfume, like literally, but it was not physical, it was spiritual. Hallelujah. So it's one of those things. The Lord comes to me. He says to me, spell newness. Spell newness. And I was on the floor and was standing. He said, spell newness. And I spelled it wrong. I spelled newness wrong. I won't tell you how I spelled it, but I spelled it wrong. And it grieved me for a long time. I hit my head. How can I not spell newness correctly? I, I was, for a long time, I actually got a revelation not long ago why I spelled it wrong. God was saying to me, you are an infant who must still grow. You can't even spell newness. Yeah. Too deep too deep. He said, you are a baby. Avail yourself to grow. Hallelujah. And listen, that day, something happened which I, I, I wonder if it will ever happen again. That day, that day, when I turned, because I had a radio, I had a, a you said that, is it VHS? The, 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 the way we were putting in a cassette to play video. So I had a TV, I had that, and I had a radio. Three. So when I play, it will play the picture will be on the TV. The, 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 the product is on the video player. And then the sound is coming from the radio, right? Guess what, Bazalwan? Everything went scrambled. When I press the video, it switches on the, 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 the TV. Like they, everything got scrambled. Even my phone, I was using a Samsung. When I looked at my phone, it was ink. Like, like, you see when the, when, when the words are written in ink and you touch it? You could not read that. Everything became scrambled. It was so weird. And then I stayed in that place for the entire six days with everything scrambled. Everything went back to normal after I got out of that place. That was the second time. The third time, it was about two years ago, I also saw a vision vision. This pastor was telling you about. I'm going to tell you about this pastor one day soon. So, he's preaching in this other church. Listen, but you know, I've met this pastor, but I've never seen him. Let me tell you a little bit about this pastor. Three months after BGC started, August, August 2018, I saw this pastor for the first time. But before that, one of my sons says to me, I saw this pastor on TV. He preaches exactly like you. Exactly like you. He tried to describe him. I could not find what kind of a pastor is that. But when I saw him, it was a day before the first high tea of BGC. I was in the room. Pastor Mom and Elder Tony were busy preparing. And the pastor comes on TV. When I looked at that pastor, I saw myself. I heard myself. I'm like, how can this be possible? I then remembered, I called this guy. And I said, the pastor you were talking about. And then I began to describe him. He said, yes, that's the one. A few days ago, I had a fellowship with him. He came to South Africa. Like little, but I kid you not, it was so real. Like my spirit was there when I woke up. I could still smell his perfume. I could still smell his perfume when I woke up. Hallelujah. Listen, the spiritual world is so real. Jesus is so real. When you want to experience him, you must desire him and become hungry 
hungry for him and not be casual about your relationship with him. Jesus Christ does not just manifest himself to everyone. He manifests himself to those who feed on him. Today I want you to go home and remember this. Every time you take communion, understand the mystery. It's not just the element you are eating. No, it is the person you are feeding on. It is a person and that person is so real. This was written for our learning. This was written for our understanding. Listen, if you want to do big things for God, if you want to actively integrate godly values into your daily life, get to know him inwardly. He will manifest outwardly. Hallelujah. He will never manifest outwardly without the inward experience. Before we close this broadcast, I want to give you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. So make this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. Amen and amen. If you made that prayer, you are born again. You are my brother. You are my sister. I will see you in heaven. And God bless you. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, please pray about becoming a partner with us. We are a ministry that focuses strictly on winning souls. We are doing so much right now to win souls. There are so many empty chairs in heaven that still needs to be filled and your partnership will enable us to remain on this channel that you are watching. So if you wanna be a partner with us, please send us your email address. Send us also your name and your surname on the information that is on the screen right now and we'll send you our partnership package which includes my two books titled Unveiling Jesus in the Tithe as well as Understanding Covenant and Inheritance. We will also send you our daily devotion on a daily basis and more than that, we will pray for you every day and you will be a partaker of everything that God is doing in our ministry. Let's fill all these empty chairs that are in heaven. You and I can do it before Jesus Christ returns. God bless you.